welcome back to day two of the swimsuit sew along. I'm Sarah with Sewing with Sarah and I'm here with the Fabric Fairy to take you through day two of our sew along. So yesterday I talked a little bit about the different types of swim fabrics, linings, elastics, notions, all of those kinds of things you needed to gather your supplies and get ready to sit down and um, sew your pattern. So today we're just going to be cutting out our fabric. Um, I'm gonna go through some tips along the way, kind of show you what I do and how I do that. Um, but it's really gonna be pretty, pretty simple today. So your job today, if you haven't already printed and assembled your pattern, is to go ahead and do that. Um, I often will just you know, print off and then cut out around the paper. If it's a pattern that I'm going to use quite a bit, I will use um, like pattern paper. I've used medical exam paper or which folds up really well. I like to store my patterns in envelopes. I have a blog post about how I store them, um, but I like to store them in envelopes, or I use Swedish tracing paper, which you can find on Amazon that I use for um, tracing out my patterns that I really want to last and really be durable. Because those little paper pieces, when they get folded up, they get kind of messed up sometimes. So. Um, that's typically what I do, um, but whatever you do to get your pattern ready to cut out, go ahead and do that. And then we'll go down to the cutting mat and I'll show you what I'm gonna do, um, just kind of the process of cutting it out. Um, if you've already made swim patterns, really any patterns before, you may not even need to watch this part of the video. Um, but I just kind of wanted to share for those of you that are newer, kind of what that looks like for me. Um, the two patterns that I'm going to be cutting out today um, are the Jaylee, um, swim bottoms they are the gg swim bottoms so um, i really like these they come in a higher rise and a lower rise the fabric fairy carries this pattern so you can use a 10 percent code to purchase the paper uh, pattern that you could then trace off at home comes with all the sizes so i really love jaylee patterns because they come with everything so these gg bottoms just fit me really well they're very nice full coverage in the seat um, they have some optional little ties that i typically don't put on um, just because they Kind of tickle my legs when I'm running around, um, but they do look cute. So I made these quite a few times. I will be cutting those out for my bottoms. And then I have decided for my top to turn the green style cami tank into a swim top. So I'm going to be making um, the uh, waist length version, which really just kind of leaves a teensy tiny bit of a gap between that and my GG bottoms. Um, I've tried it on other cami tanks I've made. I haven't made a swim one yet. Sometimes when you're taking a regular pattern and turning it into swim, you may want to size down. I have a sew along on my blog for the green style moxie shorts, and I do recommend sizing down if you're using swim fabric for those because they were designed for stretch woven. The cami tank, however, was designed to be very form-fitting, um, was designed to be made with four-way stretch athletic fabric, so I'm not going to be doing really anything different um, when it comes to sewing the cami tank. The only adjustment that I do plan on making is instead of putting clear elastic in the straps, I'm going to be using that rubber swim elastic from the Fabric Fairy in my straps just to give them a little bit more longevity. But other than that, there shouldn't be any real modifications that I need to make for that one. Um, I'm gonna be doing the shelf bra in a lining fabric. Um, so it's gonna be a pretty lightweight shelf bra. Uh, that's okay for me because I'm a smaller cup size. Something to consider when you're looking at maybe adjusting your pattern, if you're planning on making any pattern adjustments before you cut, is how much support you want. So if you want to add cups or power net or something like that um, into a pattern, that's something that you know you could be cutting out as well. Some people will use power mesh, which the Fabric Fairy carries power mesh, power net, kind of somewhat interchangeable terms, at least when it comes to Fabric Fairy stuff, um, uh, in like the front of swimsuits so that they kind of like hold them in more. Um, you know, high-waisted swim bottoms or whatever would have that effect if you use power mesh in them. Um, another th place you could use it, of course, is in the bus to provide more support. Um, if you're doing a self-lining, so if you're lining in swimsuit fabric, that's going to give more support than if you lined in one of the, like the EcoFit or the carbon linings. Uh, so that's something else to consider is how much support do you want up there. If you're adding in cups, I would just cut an extra um, layer for the uh, you know uh, underbust bra top. So in the cami tanks case, um, I could cut an extra layer in there, sew cups onto that layer, and then have that 
layer sandwiched between the layer that touches my skin of lining fabric and then the outer layer of swimsuit fabric. So, um, you know, that's something to consider. Other patterns will walk you through the process of adding in cups. Some of them will be removable, so it'll be like a little C shape in the side that you'll hem open, and then you can stick the cups in there and you can take them out. Of course, the other option is just to zigzag them down. Um, if you need help with getting sizing for the cups that Fabric Fairy carries, just go ahead and post in the group. Meg is really excellent about measuring them and giving you the size you need. Um, it's not always self-explanatory when you look at it online, but it's she's really great at helping with that. So if you do plan on adding cups to your swimsuit, you can do it that way. Um, I am not going to be adding cups into mine, but I do actually have the cups, so sometimes I'll just stick them in there if I'm going, uh, you know, going to be in cold water, don't want to, um, you know, have any show through at all. Um, but most of the time I just, you know, I've had three kids, so I'm like, whatever. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. Um, I do also plan on sewing a pair of men's board shorts during the sew along. I'm hoping to get those done as well for my husband. I've actually made uh, my boys two of the new jelly um, Jaylee swim shorts and so I'm going to be making him a pair because he was really wanting a pair after he saw theirs which is great because he never wants me to sew for him. So um, that's something else to take a look at and um, then we can go ahead and get started cutting. So at the end of today's post I would love it if you posted a picture of your cut out in progress work. It helps encourage everybody, keeps everybody on track and it's just kind of fun to see these things start to come together. So I'm gonna take you down to my cutting mat, go ahead and cut out my pattern, and then that will be it for today. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to cut out is the Jaylee Gigi swim bottoms. And I have both the back and the front here. Um, I am going to cut those out of the um, Palm um, Rec 18 swim fabric. So this is that recycled swim fabric, and I just love this color. I'm gonna be combining it with this Palm Rec 18 print for the top. So I'm excited to do that. So I have my rotary cutter and my pattern weight. So I'm just gonna set that down. I've gone ahead and already folded my fabric over because both of these pieces are cut on the fold. So I'm just gonna get started. The pattern has options for kind of a lower rise and a higher rise, and I'm gonna be doing the lower rise. Um, I've also folded over the tip here um, because I am not installing those ties. So the extra width on these bottoms is so that you can install a channel for the ties, which I'm not going to do. So I'm just gonna keep it really simple. So I've gone ahead and I'm gonna cut around this one. So I have that piece cut out and then I'm going to move my pattern weight over and I'm going to cut out the front. And again, I've folded over the edge here. I've got that all cut out. Um, so those, that is the front and the back. Now, like I said, this pattern calls for the front to be lined. So I will be cutting out an extra piece um, for the front lining. That makes a really nice um, finish on the, like kind of where the, the crotch seam is. It makes it for a really nice finish. This is where I use my little scissors. If there's any little parts that didn't get quite cut, you don't want to rip them because that can cause the fabric to snag. Um, if this fabric was less opaque than it is, I would also line the back. Um, but this is pretty good. This, this hat is not going to shine through. So I'm just going to line the front in this case. Um, so I have these pieces, I can set them aside. Now something I didn't mention before I folded my fabric over is that you want to make sure that you're cutting your swim with the greatest stretch going around the body. So it should have four-way stretch like we talked about. Um, 
but if you, you always kind of want to give it a, a, a test and make sure that you're doing it in so that the most stretch is going around your body because that's where it's going to need the stretch the most. And if you look really closely, I don't know if you can see it, you may be able to see there are little like ribs in the fabric that go up and down and the most stretch is usually going across those ribs. So keep that in mind that you're cutting the right direction. Um, now I'm going to get out my lining and this is that EcoFit lining fabric that I just love and I have all sorts of kind of crazy pieces here because I don't like to give up any of this. I don't like to waste any of it. So I just need to find a spot big enough for my front and again I'm going to make sure that those I've got the stretch correct. So this fabric is so easy to work with. Um, so great for linings. And I've used it in athletic wear for linings as well. Like if you're making a sports bra or something like that, um, I don't think its use is limited to swimwear by any means. So I'm going to be cutting out that uh, front piece again the same piece, we're just cutting the lining. I'm gonna make sure that my folded edge stays, my edge stays right along the fold there. Sometimes I'll cut down like this, especially when I have a little, there's like a little angled piece here that's for the seam allowance, and then I'll come around and I'll hold it steady and I'll cut the other direction because it's just hard to get that whole curve with your arm. So sometimes I will do that. If there were any pattern markings, um, now would be the time to mark those. I don't have anything on here that I need to mark, but I would use like a clip or sometimes I'll make a little snip, but more often in swim, I'll just use a, um, a marker or a chalk pen or something like that to you know kind of mark where that, that might be. So those are my bottoms all cut out. Now these do require some elastic. So I typically like, I'll write how much elastic it needs. So I'm gonna be using that rubber swimmer elastic. This requires um, some elastic for the legs and then some elastic for um, the waist. So I can go ahead and measure that out now. Um, let's see. I got my first measurement there, and then I can just use the same piece. Now, before you do install your elastic, and we'll talk about this on one of our sewing days, but you do wanna prep it by just stretching it a little bit. So these are my leg pieces, and then I have a waist elastic. So again, I'm using that three quarter inch rubber. I just love this stuff. Um, so I need to measure out the length of that. And when they're under bust measurements or leg measurements for elastic um, or waist measurements, you may want to like, you know, just kind of lightly like base that in and test it on yourself um, just to make sure, you know, is that comfortable or do I feel like, you know, I want a little bit less stretch. So keep that in mind. Um, but that is, that's it for my swim bottoms. They're pretty simple. I love swim bottoms for that reason. So I've got that going on. Now I can move on to the cami tank. So this is Green Style's cami tank pattern. And this has several pieces that I need to cut from my lining and then some that I need to cut from my standard swim fabric. So I have the bra cup liner and front and back um, for my lining. And you can see this is an example where it says like cut here for bra cups. So this is where you could cut a second layer and then you would hem that from your lining. So you'll have two lining pieces and then one of them will be hemmed 
you know, for, um, or I'm sorry, on this one, this, the liner would not be cut in two pieces. You would just cut one of the liners and hem it, and that would be where you could insert your bra cups. Um, you could also sew them down on here. Sometimes that shows through depending on how thick your outer fabric is. So you wouldn't necessarily need a third layer in here unless you're using something like power mesh. But if you want cups, then you would cut on that curved layer. So this is gonna be from the lining fabric, one of each of these, and then from my main swim fabric, I'll have a front and a back. And then this pattern has um, binding pieces. So it's gonna have some neck binding and some arm binding pieces. And I'm gonna be cutting those. I think I'm gonna do them out of a contrast. So I think I'm gonna use this solid again that I use for the bottom for the binding and the straps. So binding is something that I think might be helpful for me to go um, over a little bit um, for this pattern. It's, if, you know, if you're making it or one similar to it, the five out of four X Factor top that I made had a lot of binding. The five out of four Agility has a lot of binding. There are some J. Lee swim patterns that have binding as well. So knowing how to do that in swimwear um, is probably something that I'm gonna take the time to cover. So for now, I'm just gonna start cutting out my main fabric and again you know I'm checking that this is the direction of greatest stretch it's really it has really good four-way stretch so I'll just go with where the grain line is which is going to be perpendicular or the greatest stretch is going to run perpendicular to that selvage so I just fold it because these are cut on the fold Make sure that it's pretty straight. You can also take a look at those tiny little ribs I talked about and see if they are, if you're kind of running, folding along a rib and that can be helpful as well. So just make sure your fabric is not folded under you. Some swim fabrics seem to also have better recovery in one direction than another. So that's something else that I will look out for. So we got this. Sometimes on a pattern that has like a center front, I'll go ahead and take the time to like notch that at this point because you will want to know where that center front is. But since this one has a binding, that's gonna get covered up and I won't be able to tell where it is in a minute anyway. So there is that front. Set that aside. Now I can cut the back. I just got a half a yard of this. I love that half a yard is an option, um, especially for swim, because a lot of swim patterns don't actually take a lot of fabric. So it's much more economical. Sometimes I'll turn my pattern piece. If you're doing that, make sure that you are not, you don't have a directional print. If you have a directional print, you wanna make sure that, you know, all of your flamingos or whatever they are go in the same direction. I say this every so along, but it's always a good idea to change the blade in your rotary cutter um, so you get nice, clean cuts. Now this cami tag does have markings for where the straps go. I don't mark those at this phase because they're, again, they're gonna get covered up in binding. So there is the back, so I have a front and a back. Um, since I'm cutting the binding from another fabric, I can set this aside and I'm going to take out my lining fabric again and I'm going to cut my shelf bra pieces. Um, now this fabric, this lining fabric will give me a little bit of support. It's not going to give me a lot and I'm really okay with that. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm smaller busted so I don't need to worry a ton about that. But if you do want a, you know, more substantial um, lining in there, you can consider you know, adding in a power mesh or a second layer of like a swim fabric. So I'm just gonna do this. So this is the shelf bra back piece. And 
set that aside. And this is the shelf bra front. And if you were adding the cups, you would cut along a curved line for that. Um, when I want cups in my swimsuit, I will just kind of shove them in. So I'm not going to worry about that, the cups at this point. Um, I do have an example when I did the, um, when I did the power bra so along of, you know, adding in cups, I think I did a more detailed example there. So if you feel like you need more help, you know, adding in those cups, that's a good place to look. So I'm just gonna hold this down, make sure that it's on the fold where I want it. Here, I should have put down my pattern weight, but I forgot to do that. <laughs> so then I had to use my hand a little bit more. Okay, so a tiny little part here, cut that. Okay, so now that is my shelf bra. So now I only have to cut is the binding. Cutting, the binding is really where your ruler is going to come in handy. So this pattern has several bindings. It has a neckline binding, um, it has a back binding, and it has a strap binding. So those are gonna be what we're going to cut next. And then we'll be pretty much good to go except for the elastic that's needed for that. Okay, so all that's left to cut for the cami tank is the straps. And um, this is the actual strap piece. So it says skinny straps. There's options on this pattern, but I'm gonna do the skinny scra straps. And there's also options for straight straps or V straps or crisscross straps. Um, now I, this piece comes in one long piece. I find that difficult to cut really straight. So I prefer to take this piece, and this is for the binding, the strap binding, the straps are binding, um, if you don't have this pattern. And I fold it in half. Um, and I've measured that and that goes up to eight inches on my ruler and it's one and a quarter inches wide. So at that point, I find it easier to just use my ruler and my rotary cutter. And so I'm gonna start with a straight edge here, just so I can kind of get where I need to be. I'll double check that I don't have any. Yeah, I'm good to go. So then I'm going to put my ruler over, do one and a quarter inches up to eight. Um, right about there. Just make sure that this gets lined up. Um, one and a quarter inches. And then I can cut that. And before I do, all that always that like measure twice cut once kind of adage it's like I need to add a little bit more there and it's always better to cut a longer strap piece than you need than a shorter one um, especially on these straps because you can just cut them off at the end so do that And then I need a second piece exactly like that for the other strap. So I'm just gonna make sure that I'm lined up there. Okay. So those are my straps that I have now. And this is where the clips can also come in handy is because I'm always mixing these pieces up or losing them. So sometimes I'll just take them and I'll clip them together. So then I can put those in my pile. Now I need the neckline binding and the back binding. So take my fabric, find the right, find a good spot here. This is kind of a scrap that I've used this fabric for my son's rash guard. I'm using it for my swim bottom. So it's gotten a good, lot of good use out of this piece. So it's a little, funky shaped at this point. Um, so again, these are cut on the straight. They're not folded, but I am going to fold them so that it's easier for me to cut them. So 
So just gonna place one on the edge like that. And lay my ruler on top of it. I know a lot of people are intimidated by binding, but it's really not that bad. Um, and once you get the hang of it, it gets a really professional look. So I'm actually gonna move this out of the way. I like that. So that is my center back binding and then my neckline binding is actually pretty tiny. So I'm gonna use that piece I already cut. that side I already cut over here and then I can just make sure that it ends up the right length. So this is where I probably need to do a little trimming here. Okay so I can clip this. There's one center neckline binding done and then here is my back binding. You only need one of each of these. Now I will be inserting elastic into these openings. The pattern calls for clear elastic, but like we discussed in my last video, that's not a great idea for swim, especially for the amount of use that my swimmer gets. So I will be using the quarter inch rubber swim elastic in these openings with my binding, um, which is this really, really nice skinny stuff. So that's gonna fit in really well um, with the binding piece. I'm not gonna cut it now because I'll show you later, but it really goes in as I serge it on. So I don't need to cut that now. Um, I could certainly cut my under bust elastic at this point, but um, you know, I also don't feel the need to do that right now. I typically like measure it on myself before I cut it and just kind of make sure it feels comfortable because you don't want that too tight. You want it to provide support, but not too much support. So I will be using that, um, but I don't need to cut those right now. So that's all of my pieces already cut out for uh, my cami tank. Got them all in a nice pile over here and for my swim bottoms. So um, I'm excited to get started sewing these tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll be sewing our main fabrics and our linings together. Um, and then the day after that we'll be inserting elastic and the day after that we'll be hemming. So hopefully this is a good pace for you. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, definitely share some photos today of what you have cut out so we can all see and encourage each other um, and work toward um, a prize uh, giveaway at the end of the week. So um, happy sewing and cutting.